Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs, and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into the psalms. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Fortunately, this psalm is number one in both translations, so let's take a look at what it says. Blessed is the man who hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly. Counsel means something similar to advice. This means that a man is blessed if he doesn't take the advice of people who reject God, nor stood in the way of sinners, nor sat in the chair of pestilence. Way, in this part, means something closer to path. It doesn't mean that we should never try to prevent a sinner from sinning. Instead, it means we shouldn't walk the paths that sinners walk. Pestilence also refers to sickness and misfortune. Just as we shouldn't take a stand on the path of sinners, so we shouldn't sit still in any place that will lead us to ruin. But his will is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he shall meditate day and night. The person who avoids the ways of sinners is eager to know the law of God, and studies it regularly, since he doesn't want to make a mistake about what the law of God is and what it isn't. And he shall be like a tree which is planted near the running waters, which shall bring forth its fruit in due season. People who obey the law of God will make a positive difference in time. Note, however, that this doesn't say that the difference they make will be obvious to them or even happen in their own lifetime. Sometimes the biggest differences made by saints took place after they were dead. And his leaf shall not fall off, and all whatsoever he shall do shall prosper. People who obey the law of God will be successful in action, though, again, this verse doesn't say that they'll necessarily know about that success, or that the biggest successes will happen in their lifetime. Not so the wicked, not so, but like the dust which the wind driveth from the face of the earth. And isn't that true? So many wicked people spend so much time attacking and getting mad at each other that they ultimately don't accomplish anything that can last. This also refers to the final judgment, when the wicked will be sent off to eternal punishment. Therefore the wicked shall not rise again in judgment, nor sinners in the counsel of the just. Even in Old Testament times, the idea of the dead being raised was well accepted, but God only raises the wicked to give them their final judgment, what Jesus called the resurrection of judgment in John 5.29. For the Lord knoweth the way of the just, and the way of the wicked shall perish. God knows the way of the just not only by understanding what they've done, but by personally providing them with that way to follow, and by following it in the most perfect way possible. The just will continue to follow the way of justice forever and ever, but evil has no future in the kingdom of God. People won't choose wrong over right in heaven. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.